Insomniac devs and their community managers are a bunch of clowns who deserve to get pegged by a bunch of non-binary weirdos that they tanked a Middle East ban catering to. You've heard the news already, but over a year after release, Insomniac finally took the time to confirm that no DLC is happening, despite the many various leaks on DLC that was in the planning phase at the very least. Like some Beetle DLC or some other symbiotes I've heard about. But it doesn't matter now, does it? I will say that DLC isn't a necessity, but DLC is something that can greatly expand a game, like Arkham City where it originally had all of its additional playable characters as add-ons before they became base game in the City Remaster or Arkham Knight. But in the case of Overrated Insomniac, it could have remedied a 7-ish at best out of 10 game, dookie stories aside. Take the first Spider-Man game as an example. I bought the Game of the Year edition of that game which included all the DLC alongside the PS4 Pro to play it on. I complained about the second game being $10 above standard price while objectively being a short as hell experience that can casually be 100% beat in less than 2 days without speedrunning it. And hell, I've heard people say they did it in one day. Which is something I think I also could have done if I rushed it and didn't play it on the hardest difficulty. An actual good superhero game like any Arkham game or any other game like even past Spidey games that only had a year or so of development are long enough or challenging enough to not be 100% beat and platinumed in just two days. But anyway, my point is I might have had the exact same problem with the first game if those three add-ons didn't exist. Spider-Man PS4 would have been just as short. I never noticed it because I had the DLC from the very start with the first game. Beyond the DLC making game length less pathetic than it could have been, it also remedied and backpedaled on mistakes within the base game, such as shitty easy brain dead cheese combat, where you can insta-kill thugs with various means I've already delved into, like impact webs, laser trip mines, suspension matrix into the web bomb that kills everyone, and web blossom which is another move that kills everyone that you get in the first hour of playing the game. The DLC would swarm you with more enemies and enemy types that would exhaust your cheese gadgets or be immune to them like a jetpack thug with a shield that can block a few web attacks, and a few other enemy types with a minigun that was immune to most of the insane cheese methods such as the suspension matrix before you'd figure out that the underutilized taser webs would do the trick. Pretty bad for the game to have to make an enemy through DLC that is immune to nearly everything you have just because they messed up with how bad the cheese was with the gadgets to begin with, but the point is, DLC made things better for the game overall and was one of the main reasons I barely gave that overrated first game a generous 7. Easy mode traversal and stealth telling you if it's safe or unsafe to take out thugs and fucking shitty MJ missions still stayed ass from the first game and onward with the slight exception of Moss Morales being the only game without dumb MJ missions or a Spidey being fought to an even extent by humans with basic tools. Hence me giving that one a more positive score than the other two. Miles could have had a DLC, but whatever, that game was sort of made as a DLC and was never fully priced, which excuses its short length. But Spider-Man 2 would still be a mid at best game with a horrible story written for short bus students that go to schools with pride flags all over the place. And even the DLC would never fix that. But the DLC would have made the game length less laughable or maybe even give Peter Parker a non-symbiote 1v1 win against a main character that objectively did not fucking happen in the base game no matter how much these zesty voiced balding cuck incels try to argue otherwise when cutscenes on his so-called one debatable 1v1 win ends up with the villain choking him out mid-fight and sparing him. This piece of superhero media is probably the most tied media associated with the word nerf, which already says enough. Try looking up Arkham Batman nerfs versus Spider-Man nerfs, and you'll sure see a difference with quantity of results Insomniac Spidey has over every other piece of media, with a lot of other people sharing similar views to mine, even if they don't have the same amount of balls I have when I roast these fogly as fuck cope loser little dweebs that defend this shit. 
nobody with hair on their head had to make multiple close to one hour defense debunk videos on why Batman wasn't nerfed in the game where he doesn't win against the supervillain on his own, unlike. But yeah, I'm rambling, but it is unfortunate as this DLC not being a thing makes it objectively inferior to the first game in regards to game length, as they won't even let you pay them to fix that problem with DLC in tandem with their other large inferiorities to the Arkham games, or Spidey games on the PS3 and PS2 that have way more of a skill ceiling when it comes to their traversal in tandem with faster swinging speeds and a PS5 game. I guess it's a bad sign for a game to need to be relying on DLC though, unlike Arkham games or various other games that are longer games to 100% beat even if you don't buy the add-ons. I never fully reviewed Insomniac Spider-Man 2 because I actually wanted to give that zesty game the best shot I could by reviewing it at its best with all its content included. But I guess that mid shit show is as good as things are going to get, but we'll see it go to PC where modders could develop the game for those incompetent cuck devs by adding the costumes people want that definitely should have been there in a game that pretty much only prioritized the cinematics or by doing better on existing skins like the Raimi suit that modders have been shown to be more competent on, or making the swing speed as fast as a PS2 game at least, or by making MJ look like an actual woman instead of this monstrosity that cucks who get no play defender downplay, as they fail to see any healthy women that look like this under the age of 30, beyond the woman that they never hired. I'll never reveal the pretty faces of the guy at I mess with beyond these hair dye stains on the back of my motorcycle helmet, as these stalking stands have spied on my discord, or the golem grifting gremlin with his 7 videos fully dedicated to me, who followed us to a niche platform like Rumble to try and get us banned. But I pity you ugly incels who haven't even touched the dating market to the point where you completely deprived losers think this is fine. Don't even get me started on the flip-flop backpedaler who's just another first world westernized imbecile bodying for my attention as he defends a trans kid flag in a movie with younger viewers. But anyway, cucks aside, overall those who somehow still respect Insomniac should probably stop after this. If they release the DLC against their own word, which I heard people speculate they might do, but that will just make the bad communication even worse. The company has always had a shitty communication track record, as others like Amazing Lucas have stated like them adding the most wanted Spidey suit last when they added the Raimi suit, which people speculated wasn't always planned, because why would you add a bunch of other costumes before the one that people want the most, that should have been there at launch? The games based on Raimi Spider-Man pioneered free roam Spidey games, and still have the fastest swinging speed till this day, but they added three Tom Holland suits first that look even closer to the base costume than Raimi's does, as I saw a bunch of dumb shill YouTubers like Caboose use the similarity to the base costume as an excuse for not adding it. Oh, oh, or them using death threats regarding the Raimi suit as an excuse to call their fan base entitled, even though it was a slim minority of people at best that they never showed proof of in tandem with no attempts on anybody's life being made. Aside from that oddball that was stalking the MJ actress with the downgraded face in Spider-Man 2. Those actions are horrible and shouldn't be going her way, as it's the cuck devs that fucked with it deliberately, no matter what excuse they try to use. That bullshit death threat statement is such a sad PR response coming from a multi-million dollar company at that, as opposed to an actor being attacked, which is more of a significant case to be discussed. But when you're a brand as big as Spider-Man, shit like that isn't out of the ordinary, sadly. George Lucas probably had even more death threats when people were illogically bandwagoning upon his legendary prequel movies and bullying the child Anakin actor, but he never screamed death threats as an excuse to shut up the dookie critics because Lucas has artistic integrity unlike these joke tier developers and their cuckball fans who should take a bath with their toasters. But anyway, I'll be playing and covering an actual good Marvel game that I won't be 100% done with in two days that actually requires skill come December with Marvel Rivals and I'm sure will be a rude awakening to Insomniac stance as they will probably not even touch the game due to the brain dead mechanics they're used to. 
Sorry for milking yet another Insomniac video, but I'll go back to struggling to climb out of this Insomniac Marvel Spider-Man algorithm gutter I've put myself in with new DC videos despite three or so more Spidey videos I may do months down the line. Thanks for watching me roast these cuck devs and cuck stance who deserve the Big D Randy treatment this Halloween. <laughs>